Live and direct. Right, right, right. It's Sway in the morning. Right here on Shade 45. Savion Glover. <laughs> That was the legendary late great Gregory Hines. Yeah. Um, Savion Glover, man. First of all, welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah. thank you for having me. Man, I, you know, I've watched your career uh since you were the tap dance kid, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um back in the day and, and just watching you um uh, appear and reappear in movies and then on in and um off of Broadway and uh, and, and just kind of upholding a tradition of dance that I think isn't uh, highlighted enough when you talk about tap dancing and, mm-hmm. and, and its relevance that it's played in our community and our culture, um, American culture as a whole, global culture as a whole. And uh, so it's an honor to have you here, man. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. You know, yeah. you, you know, often in hip hop, we talk about break dancing and, mm-hmm. yeah. and, and, and uh, uh, you know, hip hop dancing and so on and so forth. But I think, mm-hmm. you know, it's fair to say that, you know, Tap dancers should be included in those conversations, even though I think it's a thing of itself. Um, yeah. What do you? How do you feel about that? Uh, you mean as far as tap dancing with hip hop and break dance and everything? Yeah. I think it's it's a separate uh, entity. Yeah. Um, you know, when you talk about you know there are certain elements you know hip hop the five elements of hip hop. Yeah. Um, tap dancing really has no place. Yeah. Uh, in 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 that now the influence is mm-hmm. another thing. I think the dance. Uh, particularly my generation uh, of tap dancers uh, have been heavily influenced by hip hop. Yeah. I know I have. I bring, I bring my, um, I call them, you know, my pioneers or my teachers from afar. I definitely bring them to mm-hmm. the stage with me in spirit, mm-hmm. um, and they have influenced my work, particularly yeah. um, noise funk. Mm-hmm. But um, tap dance is, is just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's still an art form that would, would be associated with, you know, ballet, mm-hmm. jazz dance, modern dance and things along those uh, lines. Where did tap dance come from? Like its origins? Well, depending on who you're talking to. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you talk to um, Fred Astaire, he'll yeah. tell you the Irish. Mm-hmm. But if you talk to me, I'll tell you it's from Africa. Yeah. Is from the land where we had no means of communication. Mm-hmm. So we had to use our bodies. We had to use our feet to communicate. Mm-hmm. We were stripped of all things um, being intelligent. Yeah. So we had to prove that we were intelligent. Mm-hmm. And um, But, you know, like I said, you can have conversations with other people and they say yeah. it, it stems from the Irish clog dancing and whatnot. Um, it's a famous story about... Uh, Fred Kelly, Gene Kelly's brother, and Gregory Hines having a conversation mm-hmm. about where tap dancing come f- came from. And um, it was just along those lines, you know, because we are who we are, you know, we're going to represent for who we are. Yeah. And I guess Fred, Gene Kelly, and people like that will say it started, you know, where where they assume it started. With, with the Irish. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, man, I had a chance to see uh, Ohm, mm-hmm. Savion Glover's Ohm. At the Joyce Theater on uh, Lower Manhattan. And when I came in, I didn't know what to expect. You know, somebody met me at the door and said, listen, if you go in that theater, there's no intermission. And if you have to use the bathroom, you will not be allowed back in. Wow. <laughs> and I said, wow, really? I didn't know those <laughs> You didn't know those rules? Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> and you can never come back. And I said, listen, don't even worry about it. Uh, well, and we'll it will change that. Yeah, yo, well, you know, honestly, after sitting down, you don't want to get up and leave. It, it was such a uh, spiritual experience. You have pictures of some of the late greats on stage, correct? Yeah. Who are some of those people you had on? Well, those are my my teachers. You mm-hmm. got you got Chuck Green, you got Sammy Davis Jr., mm-hmm. you got uh, uh, Lon Chaney, you got Jimmy Slide, you got Steve Condos, you got Buster Brown, you got Gregory Hines. You also have the Dalai Lama and Gandhi. Yeah. Why the Dalai Lama and Gandhi? Well, I consider those pioneers. I consider Gregory Hines. I consider Jimmy Slide. I consider Lon Chaney Mm -hmm. in the same vein as I would a Dalai Lama or or Gandhi. Um, Point being, they have done their contributions through entertainment. Mm -hmm. Um, In my opinion has been just as impactful as a Dalai Lama's contribution to the world as far as peace and everything like that. And same as Gandhi. Mm-hmm. These men are my Dalai Lamas. These men are my Gandhis. Mm-hmm. 
mm. you know, so I want to include them in that realm. Savion Glover is here. We just had a moment in the studio right now. <laughs> Don't do that, Sway. <laughs> oh, oh. You got to do that, Heather. Yeah, man, you know, it's, it's, it's we about to go off topic. But yeah, it's, it's, it's Savion Glover's here. Go I'm, for it. I'm 40 years old right now, and there have been people in my life, such as yourself, and, you know, that I, I probably, you know, never... I was just telling my man over here, I went through a phase of my life where I was real cloudy. Yeah. If you can understand. Yeah. Um, I've recently been kind of clear. And um, there are certain people in my life who have just been influential, heavily influential. And I've been seeing them over the time. I'm talking about mainly like, you know, hip hop people. Yeah. Um, that, you know, you, you change your whole personality to try to be like or emulate. And of course, I'm not a woman, but when it comes to hardcore, <laughs> like straight up what hip hop was before the um, this whatever's going on now, um, man, I, I have to just honor this woman right here, man. Wow, Heather B. Like she wow. was, she was, she's there. Like with one of the. One of the most influential in my life. Like, it was just a handful of cats that I listened to. Onyx, Red, Biz, Heavy, Dougie, you know, N.W.A., Ice Cube, Heather B. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you, yeah. Jersey City. Yeah. No All day. So, I thank you. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, you know it didn't occur to it didn't, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't occur to you initially that that was her. Signature. Not at all. <laughs> Say hi, hi, Heather. How you doing, Heather? All right, kept it moving. I'm looking at the face like, <laughs> nah. <laughs> That's Man. so ridiculous. And and here's why, I Sway. And I'm gonna take you back to when I was cloudy. I remember being in a well, club listen, one let's night. Let's explain cloudy. Okay, I was smoking. Listen, yeah, all right, I was smoking. Yeah, 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 and exactly. I was in a club one night in one of the illest ciphers. I'm not trying to blow anybody up right now, but it was me, Red Man, Big Cat. We rolling the L. We getting ready to get it popping. It's in the 90s. We chilling. Mm. And then, like, I'm just like, yo, get the lighter. Get the lighter. And I just see this figure walking in the club. And I'm like, yo, he kind of remind me of Red Man, but it's not Red Man. Red Man is right here. <laughs> So I put the L down, cap like past that, past that. I'm like, yo, that's my nigga Savion Glover. <laughs> like I lose it in the club and I run up to him and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's such an honor to meet you. I had no idea you listened to my music. I had oh, nothing. Man. This was in the 90s. Yeah. And when I tell you, this is no lie. I've never said this before. Only one other person knows this and that's Kenny Parker. When I went home that night, I started writing this joint called Do You. And I put yeah. Savion's name in yeah. the in the song, Do You. I wrote a line about him wow. from meeting that night because I was like, I'm going to see Bringing the Noise, Bringing the Funk one day. I'm going to see it. I said, yo, you making cats and hip hop, go see Broadway because of Bringing the Noise, Bringing the Funk. Yeah. I feel like up until then, our generation, Savion, always looked at tap dance as like sell out or whatever. Yeah. We were ignorant in that sense. And yeah. we just looked at it as cooning and shuffling. But because of you, our generation started going to Broadway and I salute you for that and I applaud yeah. you. So thank you and thank I you. honor you and respect you the same way you did to yeah. me. So thank you very much. Thank you. But I was, I was high as hell that night. I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I bum rushed him sway like a groupie. <laughs> That's crazy, man. True story. Let's, uh, if you within the sound of our voice, Ohm is um, um, the new project with Savion Glover. Mm. I got a chance to see it. Yeah. And it was a spiritual connection in there with these mm -hmm. rhythms that you create with your feet and your body and your legs. And and it's all improv. And um, it, I felt like I was in a meditative state by watching you. Like I was not I was in an ultra. I felt like I was high. Yeah. <laughs> when I, when I was watching kind. a different yeah. kind of high. Yeah. Um, what's the concept behind it? Like the concept is, uh, you know, we have we have this world of religion. Yeah. And then we have a world of spirituality. Mm. So I'm just looking to differentiate between those between those two. I believe that um, we progress or get further as as one 
once we if we concentrate more on spirituality versus the religion. Um, so my efforts through OM is to one allow uh, the listener or the viewer to understand the relationship between my approach to tap dancing and how that relates to spirituality, how it relates to sort of attaining a meditative state. Uh Um, And then bringing the different spiritualities together. We have Hinduism, we have Buddhists, we have Christian, we have the gospel, we have, um, you know, Japanese efforts. So just bringing all of these things together to say, you know, you can call it what you want to call it, but we all trying to reach the same pinnacle, the same uh, point, uh-huh. you know. So um, that's it. I, d- I did a production called Visions of a Bible, and, um, you know, we, we got some mail saying, oh, if, if I would have known he was going to be praising Jesus all night, I wouldn't have paid for this. So oh. I said, okay, let me see if all of them will work. Uh-huh. Um, and we still getting hate mail. Really? But <laughs> why? I mean, because I, I hear some um, it sound like Arabic or Muslim um, yeah. Islamic chanting. Yeah, yeah. in the background yeah. while you're tapping. Yeah, everything, yeah. everything. Yeah. It's 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 also to say that I fall into a state of meditation through tap dancing. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's counting or praying or um, just being out. You know, being out of the place. Um, Tap dancing, my approach to tap dancing can uh, uh, provide a state of meditation. So um, the sounds, the chants just enhance that state for me. Savion mm. Glover is here, man. It works too, man. I, I got uh, man. I was I was peace of mind when I walked out of that. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, Eric is in Dallas. Go ahead, Eric. Say what's up to Savion. Hey, what's going on, Savion? How on? are you? Good morning. Uh, Heather B. <laughs> Man, I to say that when I was like real, real, real young, wow. I went to New York for one of my first times, and I I wasn't into tap dancing at all. Like it was the first from my mind. But I saw you on stage doing "Bringing the Noise," bringing the song from Broadway, mm. and it, I ain't gonna say it changed my. But no, it did kind of change my life. I I didn't want to do tap dancing per se, but it mm. made me want to be better at whatever it was I was gonna do. Mm. I thought how great and how serious you took it on stage and, and how flawless you were and it just made me want to be better at whatever it was as an adult I was going to do and mm-hmm. I kind of imply that every day and I just want to say thank you for for really inspiring me to be as good as I could possibly be wow yeah man thank you all right uh, Jay Quan is in Atlanta what would you like to say yeah I'm trying to say like I I appreciate everything that, that everybody be doing I mean you know, like the inspiration that you've given us, um, you know, young people and shit when we growing up, like, it's just the inspiration. Like, watching everybody doing what they're supposed to be doing and, and seeing how dedicated you are to your tap dancing and to your, you know, to the music industry and stuff. And it just really, it really inspires me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It makes me want to go and, and do what I need to be doing. Wow. That's great. Wow. Good. Man, all the best to you. Thank you. Charles in Mississippi, what would you like to say to Savion? Yeah, man, I just want to say, uh, you know, we're down here in Mississippi, and a lot of times in the South, you know, they don't think their brothers are, are really into the arts. And, uh, Fabian, we, we, we've we been following you for a while down here in the Mississippi Delta, man. And uh, we don't we didn't look at it as, uh, you know, coonery or whatever, because, you know, tap and uh, blues and everything, all that has been a part of our life is growing up. So. Mm-hmm. You want to say big ups, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank Come you. to Mississippi, man. All right. All right. I'm going to take one more. We have Chris from Miami. Go ahead. What would you like to say to Savion? What's up, Savion? This is Chris Norwood, man. Chris Norwood. Yeah. yeah, man. I, li- I-, I live in Miami, but I'm from the bricks. And you may not remember, Savion. You've been in my crib. I've been in your basement back in the day. Okay. I was at a, I was at a Mirabal Walker's funeral. A couple of months ago, man, you did an enormous, uh, a great performance uh, okay. at his funeral. And I would love to hear your thoughts on the Mirabal Rockets' impact in Newark. And you being from the Bricks, yeah. how does that impact you? And why? And what, what what inspired you for that tap dance? What inspired that that particular piece uh, at the funeral? Yes, sir. Well, I mean, self-written. Amiri, you know. Um, you know, Amiri is like... Um, 
you know, he's like one of the cats. You know, he's he's one of the um, one of the forefathers. He's 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 one of the innovators. Um, he, he's just one of the cats. He, he's the president. You know, um, and when it when it comes to Newark, um, you know, we have. I don't know of any other leader, you know, um, that would hold weight next to uh, Amiri Baraka, mm -hmm. you know, as far as as his from political to his his active, you know, everything, everything, his impact on 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 the generation before me, his impact, hopefully on the generation to come will never be met again um, as far as what he did um, uh, for for us. So that uh, piece was my, you know, my way of saying thank you. Um, every time I saw him, whenever I saw him and his wife, it was just a, 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 a moment for me to say thank you um, for, for teaching me. Like I said, I've had many teachers that I have not yet to thank or been able to meet but I've been learning from them uh, from afar, whether it's been through reading their books or listening to their music. And when I have a chance to see them, uh, it's homage. You know, I just say thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I learn more. I went, you know, not to discredit my schools, but I learned more from whether it was people in the hip hop industry or, or people like Amir Barak. I learned more about I learned more from them about myself and about my history than I learned in school. Mm. So it's very important that I honor them and I, I, I first show my son how to honor these men and women who will teach us about ourselves more than, unfortunately, uh, the system will. So Amiri is top notch. He's up there with, with you know, it's, it's, it's God, Jesus, and then Malcolm, Mary, Martin, Heather B., <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> all right, real quick, Savion Glover. Make sure you check out Om. Um, also, man, uh, Happy Feet. Yeah. The the, the animation Happy Feet. Yeah. With Mumbo yeah. the Penguin. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that taps <laughs> divinely. Yeah. You know that's all choreographed by this man, Savion. Oh, Glover. you kid? I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Man. And, that is my favorite animation because of it. And the first time I saw it, not knowing the credits, I was like, who the hell is this tap? Like, what is, <laughs> is that a drum machine? <laughs> you know, because it's a really, if you take, if you got a guy got a daughter, so you take yeah. a kid to it, it brings people, it's, it's a wave of spirituality that comes off that animation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so when I was hearing those rhythms, and then I found out it was you, it made sense, man. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, what's next for you? What's next for me? You know, I'll probably just go on tour, do some more concert work, mm -hmm. and um, continue to spread the message through the dance, continue to honor my mentors, and um, just like that. Savion Glover, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to Sway in the morning on Shea 45.